All right. In case you don't know this, we learn limits for a reason, okay? We're going to be using limits for the rest of the year. Limits apply to continuity. Limits apply to derivatives. Limits apply to integrals. Everything in calculus is based on a limit, which is why we spent so much time on it. But when we look at a graph of functions, very easy to determine continuity. I like to think of a rope, okay? For example, for this rope right here, it's continuous because the rope doesn't break, right? It's continuous. The rope keeps going. However, down here at the bottom at the end, it stops, right? We would say it's not continuous there. So if you want to think of continuity as a rope, this is the way I think of it. As long as there's no break in the rope, it's continuous. And that's how you spell continuous, just in case you didn't know. Okay, the word that we use when it's not continuous is discontinuous or discontinuity. Whenever you have a break in the rope, you have discontinuity. And I'm going to draw an example of that for you, okay? Actually, a couple of examples. I'm just going to say this is our rope right here. Let's say you cut the rope in the middle right there. Okay, right there, there would be some discontinuity. Okay? Also, wherever the end of the rope is, is going to be discontinuity. So it's pretty intuitive, really. Every time you have an endpoint, it's discontinuous. Something else that might look like is when you have like an asymptote, it's still a break in the rope, right? I mean, they don't; those two curves don't come together, do they? If the two curves don't come together, then it's also discontinuous wherever this point would happen to be. All right, so first example. For each of these, we're going to explain where it's continuous and where it's discontinuous. And again, you can just think of it as a rope. So notice for this example, as long as we go past this point, okay, there will be no break in that curve. Okay, it's going to go on forever like that. So the way we're going to write that is it's going to be continuous from 2 to infinity. Now, just like I was explaining to pre-calculus, these parentheses mean something, okay? We're saying with the parentheses that it's not, parentheses means it does not include the number next to it. So parentheses 2, we're saying that it's not continuous at 2, okay? Now, why is it not continuous at 2? Because that's where the rope or the curve stops, right? So every time you have an endpoint, that's a point of discontinuity, which leads us to the next part. It's going to be discontinuous at x equals 2. And I do need to write the bottom part down because there's different types of discontinuity. Whenever you have an endpoint like that on a graph and then the rest of the graph goes on forever, it's called one-sided discontinuity. I mean, it's only discontinuous on one side. It's continuous on the other side. I'm going to look at our discontinuity is a little different. Okay? And I am going to go ahead and sketch in some asymptotes, okay? So there's dotted lines here where the graph doesn't exist, right? And I know you guys haven't seen a lot of trig, and so I kind of, um, I'm going to, these are just graphs, so it doesn't really matter. You don't have to know that this is a tangent graph, for example. But you can see that there's a, there's a bunch of curves on here, right? Those curves aren't connected. Since they're not connected, they're discontinuous at every single one of those x values. So, for example, at x equals negative 5 pi over 2, the curves don't meet. So they're discontinuous there, right? Every time there's an asymptote, you have discontinuity. Okay? Now, we can write that as a formula. You don't have to. I wrote it as the following, which um, I know that's going to be confusing. If you don't want to write the formula out, you can literally write every single one of these x values, and that's completely fine. So at x equals negative 5 pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, go ahead and do that. Or you can just write this general formula, which covers all of those pi over 2s.
Now it's going to be continuous everywhere between those x values. So on these particular intervals, it's going to be continuous. Again, if you want to, for example, for the first one, you could write it's continuous from x equals negative 5 pi over 2 to x equals negative 3 pi over 2. Then it becomes continuous again from negative, <laughs> negative 3 pi over 2 to pi, negative pi over 2. Then it becomes continuous from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Then from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. But at all of these x values, it's discontinuous. So if you just want to write discontinuous at all those, that's fine too. Or you can just write the formula. The name for this is infinite discontinuity. Why? Because there's infinite jumps from the left and right. We talked about the fact that the limit from the left and right of these would be either infinity or negative infinity. So that's called infinite discontinuity. Again, though, when you get the worksheet, you can just, you don't have to write these formulas out to generalize it. You can just write discontinuous at these certain intervals or certain x values. Okay, so the next type of discontinuity is probably the simplest. We can see it right here. And the way you think about this is what were to happen, guys, if you were to take this point and stick it inside of that hole? It would, be con it would become continuous, right? There would be no break in the graph, but there's a little break there because of that hole. Because you can simply take that point and put it back up into the hole, we call it removable discontinuity. So in other words, it almost looks like you just took that point and you moved it down. You removed it or moved it. So notice this graph is continuous everywhere except at x equals two. The only point that it's discontinuous is at that hole at x equals 2. Okay, the fourth type of discontinuity looks like this. Okay? If I go, if I try to go from this part of the graph to the next part, I have to do what? I have to jump up, right? There's a huge gap there. It jumps from negative 5 to 4. That's why we're going to call it jump discontinuity. Whenever the gap, whenever the graph has a huge gap like that and it jumps, it has jump discontinuity. Now notice, it's kind of like removable in the fact that it's going to be continuous everywhere except for that jump. So for example, as long as we're on either one of these curves, it's going to be continuous. The only place that it's discontinuous or there's a break is at x equals negative 2. Okay, so just to refresh your four types of discontinuity, jump, removable, infinite, and one-sided, basically an endpoint. All right, so we're going to take all those and put them together into one graph, and maybe you guys can point out which type of discontinuity is each, is uh, each, each one. So first of all, um, this is going to be continuous, right? There's no break. The first time we hit a break is right here. Who in the calculus wants to tell me which of those four types of discontinuity that would be? Jump. Yep. Good. If you just take a single point out of a curve and you move it, it's called removable. Okay. But this one's jump because there's a there's a gap there, right? Then we have another jump right here. Okay. And also there's two holes there, so it's a it's it's a little bit different than a jump because that's not even a solid point, but that's the best way to explain that one. Here we have a jump again, jump down. Okay, but here we do have a different type. That is what? Infinite. Okay, because there's an asymptote there. Even though there is a solid point here, it's still infinite because it goes all the way down before it goes back up. 
I guess you could maybe say it's a jump, but then finally we have another jump jumps down to here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and leave this to you to copy down. Basically, it's continuous everywhere except those discontinuity points we just mentioned.